Welcome to the Ad Heart Podcast, the podcast that inspires heart-first living. This is where you'll get practical tools to reduce stress, inspire creative action, and energize your personal growth momentum, along with ways to apply these tools. And now, here's your host, Deborah Rosman. Hi, I'm Deborah Rosman, and a warm welcome to our listeners of the Ad Heart Podcast. And the purpose of this at Heart podcast series is to inspire forward movement and heart-powered intention. And my topic this episode is your heart's intuitive guidance. And my guest is Neil Donald Walsh, who is well known for his book and work on conversations with God and his latest book, The God Solution, The Power of Pure Love was just released. And we're launching this episode in February, Heart Month, where we celebrate love in the heart. So I'm just so honored to have you as my guest this month, Neil. Welcome. Thank you. As you probably know, the Heart Myth Institute's been researching the heart, brain, spirit, communication pathways since 1991, over 30 years. And our research, as well as others, is showing that the heart receives intuitive information from spirit, soul, source, higher dimension, God, whatever one wants to call that, and then sends that information to the brain mind, which interprets it, then signals the body to respond. And because the heart receives it first, we call it heart intelligence. And I wondered how you view the heart in relationship to God or source from your experience. I think I view it very much the way you've just described it. To me, it feels like, well, honestly, the entire body is a receiver of energy and therefore information data from the universe. And uh, since the entire body is an intake mechanism, uh, the heart would understandably be that. But in my opinion, the heart is the core of it, the center of it, the the major receiver of it, the... The, the most um, active aspect of that re- receiving activity that is going on throughout the human body. So I, th- I think that, um, and then you know what, I think I'll go further. I think that the heart was designed, in fact, to perform that function. So I think that, uh, that um, you know, we can feel things in our heart that we sometimes can't even give words but the, um, but the feelings are unmistakable. I almost want to say unmistakable. And sometimes we have we fight to give words to those feelings uh, because words, as I was told in conversations with God, words are the least reliable form of communication. Mm-hmm. So I find myself trying to put my feelings into words and doing the best I can. Sometimes I try to translate my feelings into actions without speaking, which is also sometimes a very powerful way to demonstrate and illustrate what I'm feeling. Uh, And and sometimes my my feelings are reflected and demonstrated in something as simple as the look on my face. That's right. But um, words are the least reliable form of communication. And I only use those when everything else fails. (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting. We all pick up on each other's energies or vibes, that kids call it. And the researcher at Marth also found that whatever we're feeling is like radiated or transmitted from the heart, as well as receiving other people's frequencies, feelings from in the heart. And that the heart rate variability, heart rhythm pattern actually changes in response to not only our feelings, but other people's feelings. And there's so much more about the heart than what is normally associated with a sentimental or philosophical view of it. And I what I came to this work as a long-term meditator, knowing that it was something about heart and love that connected me to something bigger. And Our research has found that heart intelligence, this heart-brain synchronized experience, is really activated most 
easily by sincerely practicing what all major spiritual religions or paths called qualities of the heart, love, care, gratitude, kindness, compassion, forgiveness. These attributes of heart all create a physiological state of heart rhythm coherence. So that can enable us to get back to those states quicker once we understand that, as well as empower those states more and be able to shift consciousness. And wondered what your thoughts are on all that. Boy, I don't know how I want to add a single word to what you've said. I, I, but I did find myself, as you were speaking so eloquently, I did find myself wondering whether it's true for me. I thought, gee, I wonder if that's true for me. When you said that the heart receives and sends energy into the universe, does the heart send negative energy into the universe? If the mind has a negative thought about something, a thought of anger or even retribution, does the heart send that energy into the universe? Great question. What oh, of course, all of my questions are great questions. And thank <laughs> you for being on the program today. <laughs> When we feel frustrated, angry, revengeful, all the qualities that create stress, which they do, worry, all of those, the heart rhythm pattern, the heart rate variability becomes very irregular and jagged. It's a reflection of the autonomic nervous system and how it really looks like the parasympathetic and sympathetic are fighting each other when we have people hooked up to our inner balance or M-wave monitor. What's exciting is to know we can shift that once we see the feedback easier than just imagining it or mentally trying. But the electromagnetic field of the heart, with every heartbeat, we're putting out 2.5 watts of power. And that creates an electromagnetic field. And the rhythm pattern of the heart is broadcast through that field. So yes, in that sense, when we're feeling angry or frustrated, we're broadcasting that specific signature through the heart's electromagnetic field. And we've been able to define different signatures for anxiety, for depression, for, of course, the signatures for love, care, kindness, all these attributes of the heart are this smooth sine wave-like coherent rhythm, which is why we call it coherence. And so the heart will broadcast whatever you're feeling. And that's how we pick up on each other's vibes. People say, oh, I went into the room and obviously people have been arguing. I couldn't see it by their body language, but it was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Or you go into a cathedral where people have been praying and feeling love and you feel uplifted. That's the reservoir of heart energy that is created through that electromagnetic field. Fascinating. Thank you for answering that question. And yeah. it's, it's good to have you on the program with me today. Thank you. Well, thank you. You know, you say on your website, the mind thinks of everything you can lose. The heart thinks of everything you can give. And the soul thinks of everything you are. I love that. Can you say more about how you see the difference between mind, heart, and soul? Well, I think I've just said it in that wonderful sentence, but to elaborate a little bit on that, I think the soul is the aspect of divinity that resides within us. That is, I'm going to make the daring statement that I think that the soul is actually God, an individuation of God, implanted in the physicalization that we call our body, that I currently call Neil, that I currently call myself capital S-E-L-F. But I think the soul is the real self. It is the real individuation of divinity. And I think that the body, its relationship to the soul, is just a piece of equipment. It's a tool, like a tool, a hammer or a screwdriver or a wrench in our toolbox. That is, it is a piece of equipment that allows the soul to express and experience to demonstrate its true identity to expand in its expression of that identity and to engage in the process that the mind would call loosely evolution so i think the relationship between the body and the soul is that the soul is the source and the body is the tool 
that the source uses to express and to demonstrate the energy of its true identity. And I think that the heart is, excuse me, part of that process. I think the heart is part of the body, that which is the second tool that the soul uses, the mind and the body. That the body is the aspect of life that expresses or that pushes out into the physical world the vibrations that the soul invites the body and the mind to project into the world. You know what's so interesting? I, I think that when we talk about soul or spirit, I'm just going to, we sometimes we just call that our larger self, you know, and without trying to define it. But when we do our research, like I said before, where the heart receives the intuitive information first, and you can see that in the heart rate, it's called heart rate evoked potentials. It signals the brain, which then receives the information, and then the brain signals the body. So the heart is more than just the body, uh, the energetic heart, so to speak, not just the physical. It's receiving frequencies. and and when the heart and brain are in sync, the mind or a higher mind doesn't think of everything you can lose. In that state, it's thinking more for the wholeness. And yet when the heart and mind are out of phase, the mind is, turns into something very survival-oriented, self-protective, project, you know, all the things, like you say, what it can lose. So the fact that we can align heart, mind, body, and soul is where we have most access that I find personally, as well as what the research is showing, to in download, downloads, intuitive downloads, uh, intuitive conversations with something larger. Um, and so part of my desired background as a behavioral psychologist is how do we help people develop this part of their operating system, help people be able to access that more systematically, connecting with who they really are. And of course, the world, I think, needs that more than ever. But I see all the different spiritual paths I've explored through my years, all trying to do the same thing, help people connect more with that. Yes, I agree with you. I observed the same thing. But you said something that was kind of fascinating to me a minute ago. Uh -huh. okay. And I'd like to explore that with you if I could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I speak of the, the body, mind, and the soul. I, I speak of us as being three-part beings, the soul, the body, and the mind. Uh, and you said that there's, you said there are four parts of us. I heard you clearly saying there's the soul, right. the body, the mind, and the heart. Yep. So you think it is, is it your thought that we are really four part beings and that the heart, and, and as you said, not, not the physical you know, muscle that's in our chest, but the aspect of us that we call our heart, um, that center of feeling, that center and receiver of energy, that we are actually four part beings, body, mind, soul, and heart. Am I hearing you correctly? You are absolutely hearing me correctly. And then that... what is the difference between the soul and the, and the heart? The heart is the in between. It's the inter it it is the coupling between the soul and the body. Oh. The feeling heart and the physical heart are so encoupled. That's what's so fascinating about this research. When you look at heartbeat evoked potentials and you look at how sensitive the heart is to quantum field information, if you will intuitively knowing when something's going to happen without knowing how it knows or being able to know something non-locally. Uh, that the energetic heart, we call it a spiritual heart and how that couples with the physical heart and how that regulates the mind and body a lot. Did you know that the physical heart itself has a little brain inside it, 40,000 neurons that can sense, feel, learn, and remember. And the physical heart is actually sending more information to the brain upstairs through the vagal nerve and other pathways than the hot, hot brain sends to the heart. I was always brought up thinking 
the brain controlled the physical heart, but it doesn't. There's a two-way communication, and the key is getting that two-way communication channel cleared and aligned. You know, this is fascinating, and I don't mean to get into it, but could be a three-hour conversation yeah. or to complicate the matter. But when you, when I hear you speaking, I begin to wonder about what about people who have had a heart transplant? If there, if the heart has its own brain, and then it has a heart transplant, the the brain of the heart is taken out of the body, and apparently they do what it whatever they do with the physical heart. Uh, that's being transplanted. And then they bring another heart in. I asked a question because I've actually had open heart surgery and not a minor uh, stent or anything. I actually had a mm. quintuple bypass mm -hmm. uh, uh, around uh, seven or eight years ago. So I, I find myself listening very carefully to what you're saying, but I, I want to know then if you have open heart surgery, or if the if the heart has its own, I love the way you put it, its own in a sense, its own brain, its own center of neurons and information gathering mechanism, right. it sends that information to the what we call our physical mind, our physical brain. Right. What about a person who has a heart transplant? Well, it's interesting. There have been studies on that. You may be familiar with some of them, but very often the personality characteristics, like what they prefer to eat and some of their dream states too, are transferred to the recipient. But over time, I think it's the soul and another dimension of that person takes over and that tends to fade away. But no, the heart brain retains a lot of that information. So in the beginning of the heart transplant, there's documented case after case of the person receiving the heart, taking on a lot of the characteristics, perceptions, feelings of the donor heart. Wow. So so of the uh, quadru quadrant that we are, according to your definition, body, mind, soul, and heart, which is the most powerful? It and, depends and, on what you're doing. I mean, can all the people who are stuck in the mind and out of connection or their heart shut down and they have no real connection with their spirit or soul, their mind. Why, why, why would the heart shut down if the heart has a, a brain of its own and if it knows that it is the source of love and what it chooses to project into the world is love? Why would the heart ever shut down? Because it's a two-way communication between the brain, mind, and the heart. And when people yeah. have traumatic experiences they feel rejected. Then you have the freak, the feelings of heartache, heartbreak, closed off heart. But if the heart knows better, why would it shut down? Why would it not encourage the brain to remain open? In well, its the community? higher heart would always be open. The real heart would. But the mind can mask it and veil it. And that's part of evolution, I believe. That's part of the learning process and growing is to when people are hurt or traumatized, we have a trauma program about this called the resilient heart. You have to learn how to reopen the heart or grief. We have it's like an see, you know, one of those little sea anemones that you poke it and it closes up. It's so yeah. sensitive. Yes. And it's got to be reopened through love. And love is a choice, I believe. Here on this planet, we have to choose, we are in a planet of choice. So it's choosing love. It's not automatic. And as we choose it, we reconnect heart, mind, body. And if you look at the world right now, it's in crisis because the mind, we've tried everything except opening the heart to each other. And yet there's more heart awakening on the planet happening, even though I don't see it in the news. And to me, that's the hope for the future because it's establishing this heart awareness and heart consciousness on the planet that is the next level of human evolution and how we're ever going to all learn to get along with each other, despite our mental upbringing differences. Or you seem to be saying that the heart is the most powerful uh, or, or, is it, or is it the mind? Because if you're telling me that the mind has to choose the heart after if it has a yeah. traumatic experience or, or you know, be threatened or in some other way, uh, in a negative energy field, that the mind has to choose yep. to reopen itself to the heart, which means that the mind is in control. 
And a lot of times it is. Why do you see the violence and the horrible stuff going on? It's the mind dominating out of projection or fear, or all the reasons. But you're right. The mind has to choose the heart, just like we have to choose to shift to the heart, breathe through the heart, choose to forgive, choose to feel compassion, choose to feel kindness, choose to replace separation with connection. And that's our collective mission, those of us who have awakened to the power of love, the power of the heart, is realizing that. So you're right, the heart is, but it has to be activated and awakened, the most powerful intermediary between spirit and body. It is the power of the heart, the hidden power of the heart, but it's all there, it's always been there. We just haven't learned how to activate it without all the religious trappings and rituals and trying to take that and clean it to what's the essence is really what heart math is about. But it's all about love. It's all about bringing love into the mind and manifestation. So is there a process that you can recommend to simply... Uh, sim simply thinking people like me, I have a very simple mind. Is there a way that